And that's where the miracles are. God has miracles right now. Dylan, I don't know why I'm working with young people today. It's going to be interesting. You are how old? I'm 23. 23? Yeah. Okay. And um, you are uh, 23. So this is a, this is a, thank you for the courage to come up. Most yeah. guys don't come up. Women, nine times out of 10, women for some reason will come up. They're so, they're so connected with their feelings. They connected the feelings. Men are disconnected. Thank you. Because I think you're Absolutely. a rare guy. Yeah. Thank you're, you for having me. You're what? I said thank you for having me. Oh, well, I'm glad to have you here. So now here's the question. Why don't you go ahead and read this? And here's what I want you all to do. Watch his face while he reads. Watch what he does, because every little uh, facial feature reveals something. Go ahead. Okay, number one, I have uh, married the woman of my dreams. Number two, I have always viewed the world like a child. Number three is to never stop seeking after the Lord and his wisdom. Number four, I have have a wife and many kids and adopt international children. Uh, let's see, number five, uh, be an innovator and leader in technology business. And number six, revolutionize poverty-stricken countries with innovative ways to help them. I know this is, this is a, uh, an easier list in one sense because you don't have going to seminary and, and you know, a whole bunch of other things competing with right. it. But um, what we, and what I'm noticing here is you have a high value and I didn't get a chance to instruct you on, on how to set the list up, so I took it as it comes, but notice Young people are interested in getting married and having children, except for our last speaker who wants to have them at 60. I'm not, not sure how that right. works. <laughs> but, but marry the woman of my dreams and have a wife and many kids and adopted children. Right. Now, this is interesting. It was the only statement, if you replayed it, it was the only statement that had an emphatic. Everything else you said with a question mark, it was the one statement you said with an exclamation point. I not only watch what they're doing, I'm listening to what they're saying. So that tells me something, that, that for you, one of your core values is the woman, the dreams, the wife, the kids, adopted international children, is, uh, is connection. That there's something about connection as part of your, your value system that's part of your passion. So whatever you're gonna do, the connection part is going to be there. And you also have the world the view the world like a child. This is just what I see when I'm looking at this. Because I notice children, wife, child, woman. Anybody notice a pattern here? And, uh, and what it means is that whatever your ultimate convergence looks like in terms of calling and destiny, that for you, there is a part of you that wants to retain the connection with yourself as a child at a, at a creative child openness level and share that world with others that have that same value. Does that, does that make right, sense? absolutely, yeah. So because that is a life phase thing, um, I'm going to suggest that uh, we're going to pull that off the list. Okay. And because young people, uh, they, they want to be married. And, and what I want to do is uh, I want to look at this in terms of the calling passion and not just the, uh, the desire passion. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up here with uh, children and put that here and adopted children. So we have it, but that is going to be something which we're gonna bring back in at the end of the process. Now, always view the world like a child. Right. The question here is, are, these are things that have to be in your life for you to feel fulfilled and complete. Of all the attributes in the world, why, what, what is the attribute of a child that you most cherish? I think that their perception of the world, that creative mind, that innocence of a child, the way that they view things and the way they can produce creativity uh, from nothing over everything they see is something that is so valuable and so important that many adults lose, you know, or even child, children lose as they grow up just from society or culture. They just lose that view of the world, that perception and now how wonder. About, now how about, you, you know, you have a background in church world, right? In yeah, church right. right? Now this is very interesting because I find that the upbringing in church can sometimes be uh, part of where the competing commitments come from for us. So did your experience growing up in church cultivate innocence and creativity or was it a challenge to it? I would say growing up in church as a child it cultivated. Okay. Definitely. Great. What was the greatest challenge for you? What was the missing piece growing up in church as a young man? Growing up in church, um, I was a pastor's kid. So I grew up in church my whole so life. So like um, there's a psychology right there we could all relate to. Yeah, right. Good. I think uh, probably the number one challenge was seeing 
maybe authenticity and um, like true Christ-like love and the people that are, are running things and that are like the shepherd of the flock. Okay. Know? So what we're looking for is, uh, I'm, see, I'm watching those words when I talk to people. So authenticity. Mm -hmm. um, that, uh, that authenticity, and I'm going to put another word up here, which is total unconditional acceptance, which is another way of describing love. And the reason why I want to put that there is because your core value, marrying, children, adopted, childlike innocence, creativity, the absence of authenticity, that one of the things that I believe you are carrying as a gift, that we're going to see how this works, mm -hmm. is the ability to be honest. And that's why I'm so glad you're up here. It's honest with yourself, honest with your feelings, honest with your experience. Very few men have that ability to be able to, so I commend you for that. Yeah, how did you get that? Where did you, you. Where did you acquire this uh, comfortability talking about your feelings? Um, I, I'd like to say that I just... Um, pattern myself after my leaders and people that teach me, you know, I, I don't know, I just shape myself based on those that I look up to, okay. know, my mentors. And, and so, you have, so you have seen authenticity in yes, leaders? Yes, of course, yes. Okay, and it's helped you to appreciate the necessity of having Absolutely. It. All right, I did that for a, for a reason. You've got never stop seeking after the Lord and His wisdom. Now that's a, um, is that a specific passion or is that a high value in your life? It's a very high value. All right, notice the difference. Value is something which, you're, which, uh, which is how you're going to do your passion. Right. But your value is kind of like family is a value. Mm -hmm. And authenticity is a value. Right. Innocence is a value. And seeking after the Lord's wisdom is a value. So now we're coming, we're coming down to something down here, which is being an innovator and leader in technology and business. Mm -hmm. So say that one more time. Be an innovator and leader in technology business. All right. And uh, what's the next item there? Revolutionize poverty-stricken countries with innovative ways to help them. All right, catch this. Being the innovator and leader in technology and business and revolutionizing poverty-stricken countries. So there's, your, like, there's your, your core spiritual value right there. And there's that innovative word again and innovative ways to help them. Correct, yeah. So for you, if we wanted me to collapse this thing so that in this brief time that we have, people could get the benefit of this. What I see here, and what you would want to discern in your own life, is what are the core values that drive you? In terms of your career direction, it's going to be big on connection with authenticity, unconditional love, and, uh, and creativity. Mm. That's, that's the common ground there. But here, when we get to this part here, I want you to embrace one word, and it's called leader. Because this is the next evolution for you in terms of like where you gotta go. Right. You are a leader, so I want you to say this, I am a leader. I am a leader. I am a leader with a heart. I am a leader with a heart. I am a leader who can feel. I'm a leader who can feel. And who can articulate direction. Who can articulate direction. I am a pastor of technology. I am a pastor of technology. I am a shepherd of business. I am a shepherd of business. And through this technology. And through this technology. I'm going to make a place for those that are poor. I'm going to make a place for those that are poor. And for the displaced children. And for the displaced children. That have no home. That have no homes. I will provide homes. I will provide homes. I will never stop seeking. I will never stop seeking. Like a child. Like a child. And I will protect the innocence of my generation. I will protect the innocence of my generation. And I will show them how to walk freely. I'll show them how to walk freely. As a minister in the marketplace. As a minister in the marketplace. As a leader in business. As a leader in business. And as a lover of children. And as a lover of children. Now put your hand on your heart right there. How does that feel when you say that? Feels good. Okay, keep your eyes closed. What's the one thing that when you say that, I am a leader, say it again. I am a leader. I am a leader in business. I am a leader in business. And I'm a minister in business. And I'm a minister in business. And I have great wealth. And I have great wealth. And I use this wealth. And I use this wealth. To touch the lives of children. To touch the lives of children. And the poor. And the poor. What's what could come up for you when you walk away from me right now mm -hmm. and be the first thing the devil says to you as to why that's not going to happen? The first doubt that would happen? Um, yeah. 
probably would be that I wouldn't be a leader in business. That would be my first doubt. And why wouldn't you be a leader in business? Not exactly qualified. And in, why in aren't the traditional you? sense, education or right. um, you know, even just growing up in, in that environment. You know, I obviously was a pastor's kid, so I, I didn't grow up in an environment that cultivated a business mind. Right, so now, and I wasn't educated for it. This is priceless. I want you to hear what happens. It doesn't matter. If you get clear on your passion, the moment you say what it is you're called to do, you have 1,500 words a minute go through your head. Yeah. And 1,500 words a minute go through your head, and 80% of that dialogue is unconscious dialogue. But I'll tell you what, the devil will tell you that's not you, you can't do it. You will actually feel something great when you say it. And then right away, I mean, look, I, and the thing is, I just said to him, what's going to come up? It, it took him no time. He even knows what the devil's going to tell him. And you do too. The devil will tell you why you're not qualified. Now, here's the funny thing. You're, you need to be able to write down what's the reason why you can't do it. And here's what I, here's what I heard you say. I'm not a leader. And that's why, I, that's why I specifically got the word leader there. Because you are a leader. However, being a pastor's kid. Did you hear his pastor's kid line? This reminds me of Kathy Garber, the Amish woman who only had an eighth grade education, who was called to be a multi-million dollar, you know, entrepreneurial type person. And she's saying, but I love and want to do it, but I'm not qualified. So she was trying to check out of her destiny. Here's the reality. The devil's a liar. And, the, and David, while he was a shepherd with a few sheep, was being trained to take on a giant. The fact that you come out of church isn't a disqualifier, it's a qualifier. Amen. Because that experience of growing up with the people of God, uh, around church, around spiritual stuff, the value of that is that when you come out from that field of church into the field of business, when David came out in front of Goliath, you recall what Goliath mocked? Remember what Goliath mocked? He mocked David and his staff. You know why? The devil mocks the shepherds. He doesn't, he, the devil mocks shepherding. The truth of the matter is that you coming as a preacher's kid is like David. You not only saw what worked, but you saw what didn't work. Now I want to do something which is totally honest right now. Okay. So just get, get right there face to face with me. And frequently we need to do this. Young people become disappointed because leaders aren't always as complete as we want to be. And we don't always do a perfect job of modeling Jesus the way we wish we did. I've had to do this with my own children. I want to stand right now, Dylan, in the place of pastors because I, I am aware that I failed also in being the authentic leader I needed to be. What I'm asking you is, will you forgive me as a pastor for failing as the pastor to protect and nurture you, your innocence, your hunger for God, creating a safe place for you to even fumble and fail and still feel complete and accepted and embraced. Absolutely, I forgive you. You forgive me? Yes. And will you forgive all the ministries that have disappointed you right now? Yes. I right, just close your eyes. Father, I thank you for this and all, you do this with me at home too. Father, we forgive those leaders that have fallen short knowing that if we will learn from their mistakes as well as their strengths, we'll be able to do more exploits than even they did. And the truth is, Dylan, it was the failure that created in you the strength of this value, right. that you love that. Right. All right, now I want you to say this. I am a leader. I am a leader. Because I was a preacher's kid. Because I was a preacher's kid. I've got the best of both worlds. I've got the best of both worlds. I've got the DNA of the kingdom. I've got the DNA of the kingdom. And the anointing of an entrepreneur. And the anointing of an entrepreneur. I am a minister. I am a minister. And I take my shepherd's staff. And I take my shepherd's staff. Right from the house of Jesse. Right from the house of Jesse. Into the place where I need to go to war. Into the place where I need to go to war. And I take down the Goliaths in my life. And I take down the Goliaths in in my life because I'm a wealthy entrepreneur because I'm a wealthy entrepreneur and as I get it and as I get it I give it I give it and the world is made different because I was born. and the world is made different because I was born there you go how's that feel it feels amazing it feels amazing